We'll start with Robbie. Hey, KJ. How's it going? Uh, last week, I know you said that a lot of the offense is going to be dictated on what you see defensively when you're on the field. But I'm sure you guys have, have had a, a chance to talk a little, about, a little bit about what LSU does. I know they got a new defensive scheme, and a lot of those guys from last year are not back. Um, what's your thoughts on what their defense is going to present and how you guys uh, plan on attacking it? Yeah, so, you know, in my career, four years, I mean, I've experienced a couple of these games where you go into a game, first game of the year, and, um, you know, you don't necessarily have any legit tape to match it up to in terms of scheme matching up with personnel. Um, so that's always a little bit difficult, trying to match tape from, you know, where Coach Pelini was at prior to personnel um, that LSU had last year, which most of them are now gone, but you can still see quite a bit of them on tape. Um, so that's always a bit of a challenge, um, but you know there's still tendencies that he's shown for the past whatever 10, 15 years he's been coaching, going all the way back to you know Tech when Nebraska played Tech and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean he's got some some basic patterns. I mean you never know. Once again, I mean I'm not trying to make too many judgments here because he's got different personnel than where he's been the past couple of years. Obviously, potentially some of the you know, best defensive players in the country. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how the scheme's going to line up, but we're going to focus on doing our job and doing it well. Um, and uh, I think we did that today in practice. We'll go to Ben. KJ, in this offense, I know you're, it's a little bit more like throwing to space versus throwing to a guy or a specific spot. I guess, what's that challenge in terms of that? And I guess I know Coach Lee talks a lot about that this is an offense that you got to rep out a lot. Is there? A, how do you feel like you've come along with that? And I guess how different does that compare to maybe what you've done in the past in terms of what you're looking at to play snap to snap? Yeah, I think a, little, a switch flip today for me. I think it was the best practice since I've been here, um, not just for me personally, but as the offensive unit, um, without a doubt. Energy, tempo, execution. Um, you know, I felt like was thinking the least that I've been thinking in two months, um, which is fun. Um, I think that I never really even played that way at Stanford unless we were in a two-minute drill. Um, so I kind of tapped into something good there. Um, we're going to try and build off that each day. That's the standard moving forward. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a philosophical difference. I mean, I could sit up here all day and talk to you about it. But at the end of the day, um, we really are just trying to do our thing and do it fast and, and do it right. And you know thinking about it. I mean, we've, we've really only been at this thing for two months, you know. Um, so today was an incredibly good feeling as a whole. Um, just looking around at the dudes afterwards, um, you know, scout, even though scout defense, the guys are still studs, not, not wanting to pass for us the same, you know, not wanting to come up and press, you know. Um, easy completions, move the ball, um, run when you got, you know, just like really simple stuff. Um, I think we got to build off that and make that the standard. We'll go to Tyler. Hey, Jay, you being from California and starting over two dozen games at Stanford, it's, it's kind of all you've ever known. And, and here you are now at Mississippi State, about to start, you know, for State at LSU. How weird is it going to be? How different do you expect it to be? And, and just what do you expect your emotions to be when you run out onto that field and, you know, you're the quarterback for somebody other than Stanford? Yeah, what was going to happen one way or another, whether whether I went to the next level or not, or, you know, playing, continuing to play football. But I think football's football. I think that's something I kind of realized. Um, you know, I had such an incredible experience at Stanford. I thought the whole, you know, I thought college football functioned the same way everywhere. I obviously um, realized it didn't. Like, I, I knew it didn't, but being in Leach's system and, you know, being the leader of it, driving the energy, driving the focus, um, you know, I think people have asked me a lot this week across the board, where, where are my emotions at? What am I, I mean, honestly, I'm not thinking too much about LSU whatsoever. I've been here two and a half months. I'm just starting to feel a flow in this offense. I want to feel it every day. You know, I want to continue to, to um, master our craft um, and then, you know, react to what they're going to do. And I think it's a perfect week to just focus on us because of the fact that, New D coordinator, new defense, new personnel. Um, you can, you know, sit up all night talking about what you think they might do, and then get up and, and not be able to do what you're supposed to do, or guy messes up, or you don't get to a base check that you've been working for a month and a half. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm on 
uh, doing my job, and that's where my focus is. Brian. You sort of hit on this in your answer to Mr. Robbie's question at the beginning, but you know the last two years of Texas Tech for Mike Leach overlapped with the first two years of Bo Pelini at Nebraska. Has he related anything to you as far as you know what he remembers of that defense in those matchups? Yeah, Co Coach Leach has an incredible um, memory bank to say the least. Um, but I think a lot of coaches do. I, you know, almost Sean McVay like. I mean, he's out there talking detailish type stuff from. 10 years ago, you know. Um, we pulled up some tape, we've seen it. Um, I love watching the Texas Tech tape, actually. I watched the whole Graham Harrell season and, and they came across Nebraska there. And, you know, I, you see a style. Um, I've seen a couple styles like this. There's not a, um, a thousand coaching trees out there in college football. I've seen some styles that are similar to Pelini's. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Leach has a good way to attack it. Tyler, yeah, just a couple quick follow-ups to things that you've already said. Real quickly, you said you watch a lot of Graham Harrell. Is that something the coaching staff, specifically Mike Leach, likes to have you do, or is that something you kind of take upon yourself? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I asked for the tape, you know. I mean, I wanted to see um, who was the most successful in the system. I mean, who exactly was the most successful. Obviously, I was able to see with my own eyes Gardner and, and Gordo, but I didn't, you know, I was – on the sideline game planning against them. I wasn't watching them play, so I had those two. And then I wanted one that was a little bit further back in time to kind of see how this offense could have potentially evolved or kind of stayed the same. Um, and I was also, you know, just wanted to see a little bit of what he was doing at Texas Tech. So, you know, I asked our film guy for it in summertime. Um, and, and then I talked to Leach about it, and, and he actually said uh, Graham was, was a great one to watch in terms of, his real subtle movement in the pocket and, um, you know, just his efficiency in the offense um, and taking what the defense gives him. And then another thing you said earlier about uh, the switch kind of flipping, is that something that you've kind of been waiting for in all these weeks in training camp and it, and it finally clicked and it's something that you can carry into previous practices? Or, and then kind of what went into that, that flip switching? Because you said it was kind of a collective thing throughout the offense. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I'm a little bit lucky in terms of the fact that I've had the switch flip for me before in college football. Um, you know, I mean, was a backup going in my uh, redshirt freshman year, or my freshman year, I thought I was going to play, and then all of a sudden concussion happened or, you know, our starter got knocked out. And that next week, practice was totally different for whatever reason. I had already gotten game reps. The speed was different. Execution was different. An anticipation was just a split second faster, um, kind of hard to describe. But I mean, today I think it was just, uh, God, you get in that camp mode, you're in a new offense, new system, new everything, and you're doing the same thing every single day. Um, it's hard to find something um, that feels drastically different. Maybe it was the fact that we've, you know, had a day off yesterday, came back, had a really good scrimmage Saturday. Um, you know, we actually started started the offensive period servicing the defense by going up tempo as fast as we could, and went five for five, and all of a sudden that carried over into the tempo that I was um, pushing the offense and, and team period. And I don't know, the switch flipped in terms of I've been operating in a system where I'm battling most of the time, getting the playoff before the the play clock, um, and now I'm in a system where I'm trying to get that thing off as fast as I can. Um, so it's just a totally um, flip mindset from um, the person driving the ship and, you know, having the center be on board, getting the guys lined up. It's just um, it's different in that facet. So I think that was more what I was talking about. Ben. KJ, you mentioned looking at some of the little things that Graham was doing and some of those other guys. I guess, you know, when you look at it, I mean, beyond the fact, you know, scoring 100 points and throwing 50 times, like, what does the success in this offense look like to you? I mean, what do you kind of gather the success in this offense looks like? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> success in this offense, I think, um, a lot of times looks like, uh, the, you know, the defense kind of looking around in, in the third quarter, fourth quarter, like, you know, tired, not really knowing what hit them. They're very scheme-oriented. I mean, I can only speak on our – I mean – 
what they did to us at Stanford. I watched the game last night. You know, I watched the whole game um, and watched exactly what I did in the day the day before in practice. They're running the same plays, just trying to visualize like how were they able to turn my defense around? And I know all the guys who are really talented, and they just hit them and hit them fast. Um, and I know it probably sounds crazy to you guys just saying the same thing, um, but it really is. It really is uh, the t the tempo and feel at which you know. Anthony Gordon was able to move along with um, to where DBs didn't want to press, you know, pass rush gets a little weaker. All of a sudden check downs, instead of the linebackers hugging him, you know, he's a yard or two off and that check down goes for 12 instead of one, you know, just simple stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Robbie. KJ, you felt like you, things were starting to click for you. Where's the rest of the offense, you think, just from what you've been able to gauge from your receivers and, and the connection that you guys have been able to build? Uh, what, where, where do you feel like those guys are in, in the offense? And, yeah. You know, even Will Rogers behind you. Yeah. Um, I, I, You know, I, I told them today, I, should, I played a lot of football. I think they're the most conditioned group I've ever seen in my life. I mean – yeah, we went through some dog days in camp of just insane amount of reps. And, um, you know, I think confidence was earned there. So, I mean, across the board, you know, I think we're going at that same tempo and guys aren't looking as tired. You know, they're making catches. They're extending their, you know, making catches over the shoulder on a, you know, deep corner route where they need to give a little bit more to finish the play. 